get your ass back to the North Pole and start making some noise. Everyone loves it. Princess Peach or Toad. The yeah. yeah, one. Yeah. Like, what am I watching, man? Ah, <laughs> oh, digging the hat. Hey, Dan, how you doing, man? Right. Yeah, how you doing? Sorry Good. I'm late. Hmm. Tilt your head down for a split sec. I just got to see it. Oh, it's uh, North Melbourne Kangaroos, uh, the Austin nice. Football League. Oh, nice. Okay. It, it, was, a, it was a gift uh, from when we toured through Australia and... Um, I like wearing it because it's the one sports hat I can wear that won't create controversy among people on the street. So <laughs> well, most people are probably like, who the hell is that? Exactly. It's really yeah, nice. Yep. Watch that be just like a koalas fan going down the other side of the street on the sidewalk and be like, you bastard. <laughs> well, that, that, that's the funny thing. Cause we, we toured through Australia a second time and I just wear this hat all the time. And they were like, North Melbourne, <laughs> like how dare you? You know, <laughs> so it's it's all... it like, are they like not a very good team or something? Or they're they're actually terrible uh, at the moment. Oh, okay, um, yeah, like I think they're the I think they might be the worst team in the league, which uh, I'm getting used to rooting for these days. Dude, I, I know the yeah. best sports movies in the world were about like the worst teams, uh, the Indians, the Cubs, all of them. Classics, yeah. yeah. The Oakland A's are basically living out the plot of Major League in real life. Right <laughs> I feel terrible for them, man. Like I feel bad for those fans. The when when you when you're in a sports city and you know the team's leaving, it's just like yeah, it's like watching it's someone just... you love like die in front of you. Ooh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although in that case, you don't necessarily throw things at the person that's dying. But true, yeah, true. Well, it's not a one to one. Saying but... sell the team, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dan, your video is a little on the fuzzy side. I don't know if it's a lighting thing or a camera no, thing. No, it's a it's my fault. I um when it, yeah, it, it's I get this all the time. I don't have a good system yet set up over here. It, it's just my laptop, and um, I don't know if this actually does anything, but I put a piece of tape over the little camera um hmm. to keep from getting spied on. I thought I was a conspiracy theorist until I saw Mark Zuckerberg doing it. And I was like, all right, I better do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but it has left a thin, gross film over the lens that I can't clean off. Uh, we'll okay. fix it in uh, post. It's fine. Yeah, okay, no, cool. just, <laughs> yeah. See if we can put a filter over it. Yeah, just like exactly. get some be gone and just like, you know, rub that off. Yeah. I always like so. look like I'm coming from like a magical fairyland. So. It's no, we're, we're just taking it back to like your, your, your sonar days and be like, that's just all hayes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Welcome to my hot box. <laughs> How you doing otherwise, though? Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, everything's cool. Um, I, I'm, man, I like, you're catching me at a real like downswing in my uh, moments with the team. Like, I, I was, I'm such a, an optimist by nature that as soon as something good happens, I'm like, here we go. Hmm. Turning point for the better. And then just like immediate, like th this season in particular is just like an immediate smackdown every time you get your hopes up. So what you're saying is we're cursing the team by yeah. having these conversations. <laughs> no, no. <Yeah. laughs> it's, they're, they're doing it themselves. You know, it's, I know we're going to talk a lot of uh, NYCFC and everything. And obviously, you know, Maxime Chino was gone. Maxime Morales is back. Yeah. We talked about Maxi the last time. And the struggle that's existed with this team and the likelihood they're probably not going to make the playoffs unless they can somehow pull out a six game winning streak in the last six, including beating Messi down in Florida. But you know what though? I'll say this, despite everything, the fans still have energy, you know, the, the writers, Trey, I mean, I'm have, you know, I had to ask you basically, you, did you see the picture of Trey with that cat the other day? Yeah. I love that guy. He's the best. Dude, that, that was such a cute kid. And I was so excited. I was so cute. <laughs> um, Everyone needs one. But um, yeah, no. It's, well, you have you, you have your cat pictures too, uh, Scott. Yes, I do. Well, I have a three legged cat. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but it was one of those things that tr he knows Trey, uh, film one of the sports writers, and Trey is currently fostering yeah. a cat, and it's this cute little black and white like tuxedo kitten. It's probably about like yay big at this point, and um, <laughs> it. Oh my god! But that notwithstanding, it has been it's been rough, even with the one one draw that happened yesterday. But um, I don't know. What are you thinking right now? Well, he, here's here's my optimistic spin on it. Um, this team's given us a lot of good times in the past 
seven, eight years. You know, they, they've they've uh, they've been very consistent, um, with the exception of year one, for getting to the playoffs, making a good, honest run at it, and doing everything they can. Um, and also, you know, not to be this guy, but like when they announced that uh, the team was getting its own stadium at the beginning of the year, that in a way was almost bigger than winning another championship, you know, because mm. the, the, there was the, the growing fear. I don't know if growing is, but there was a creeping fear for me that at some point these investors are just going to peace out if, if, uh, if this team can't get a stadium and can't really solidify itself in the New York area. So super big picture. Um, I'm, I'm happy overall with, you know, the way the team is going, because as you know, I grew up a Metro stars fan mm -hmm. and like, that was like a barren field of, of nothingness for so very long. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> like I, I remember it was a giant the, stadium, I think, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yes. it was. Uh, with like 10,000 people, which looks empty. Oh, 10,000 10, would be a good day. There there were times when there could not have been more than 3,000, 4,000 people there sprinkled mm -hmm. in an 80,000 seat stadium. Um, so that's what I got used to growing up with this league. Um, so it, it, from, from that perspective, NYCFC is doing a really good job and the fans are awesome mm -hmm. and uh, everything's cool. And with this last group of transfers that came in Bacrar, uh julian like I, i'm 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 certainly intrigued by their talent and like with Bacar, like Bacar. sorry i'm still getting used to the names uh he you know the the ball explodes off his foot when he when he you know kicks it to goal and i'm like oh god that's what a striker feels like that's right <laughs> and it, it, it um so so there's that uh Julian Fernandez, that that's mm -hmm. the name, right? Big yeah. tall. The retreat re transfer, yeah, not not Perea, but the Fernandez. Right, right, right. Yeah. Perea, I like too, but I think he's short term. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, Fernandez yeah. looks looks like he has awesome potential. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, and, and and there's a couple of others, um, and it's great to have Maxi back. So, I like if they'd gotten this set of players earlier in the season i mean who knows if that was a possibility or not um i think i would have felt better there's just i don't know there's there's weird things that happen around this team that mm -hmm. may i'm just not privy to you know um like tati's going to leave but then he doesn't leave and now he's maybe annoyed but he, okay he's gone but now ronnie's <laughs> gone you know like at the and, same time pretty much too yeah, and and Chano is another one where it's just like s stuff happen, big things happen out of nowhere, and um, I mean, granted, maybe as a fan, you're not supposed to know these things, or, or it's, yeah, it's, it's not your business really. But like, a lot of it is inside locker room dumb stuff. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, but like, I, at least, and maybe it's just like the more intense coverage, but at least with football. Or the Giants, which is the other team I really mm -hmm. follow. It feels like you yeah. can see things coming a little bit, you know. Um, but but with NYCFC, it, they're just enormous. Like you have to say goodbye to players you've loved for years out of nowhere. They're just gone. Like, and it's not wish to know. It's not during like a transfer window or anything like that. It's just one day. He's like bye. Um, very very reminiscent of when Dyla left. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's funny on this side and trail back me up and Michael Allen and all the rest. You get to know these guys directly. You know, when you yeah. start seeing naked players, you really get to know them pretty well. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, wait, wait, what? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, when you're in your locker, Being in the locker room, room and you know, just kicking butts all the time. it's interesting trying to talk to somebody with their drunk hanging out. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> but well, it's all, rumor has it that Chanel left because of an issue with the it, captaincy. It, you know, where there was oh, an issue. Really? That's what that's what we were hearing on the inside. I don't know if it's true or not. But right. it's supposedly it was it was a falling out, definitely a falling out between him and Nick Cushing, because mm -hmm. Nick Cushing addressed it in the press conference, and then Chino tweeted about it, you know, right. about the response. Right. So it's starting to get really kind of weird there. But on our side of it, you know, you get to know these guys for a while. You know, when Tiago left earlier in the year, uh, Tiago Andra, you know, when Malte Amundsen, I like Malte, 
you know, and he went to Columbus. It's like you build these rapports, you get to know these guys for a couple of years, you laugh, you ask questions, you get to know them, and psh, they're on another side of the planet, you never see them again. And it's it sucks on our side, but it's yeah. funny because at the same time, you also get to see them as the humans that they are and not the jersey and the field talents. Very lot closer as a result. I think it's a good thing in some ways, but it's tougher at the same time when they go. For sure, for sure. And uh... Pereira was the other one that mm. I forgot, but like just that was quick. Then. You're one minute gone the next, and I I think that is that's my biggest concern going forward because if maybe it's tough to have a greater plan when you have a, a setup like New York City and the hierarchy of City Football Group, mm -hmm. um, where there's always so much movement, but with move with moves like. Pereira leaving it feels like at least as an NYCFC fan it feels like they're now going back on the plans that they set in motion you know mm -hmm. um that that was uh sorry to keep bringing it back to the Giants but that's a, an easy way for me to yeah like put it in my mind the the Dave Gettleman tenure of general <laughs> man yeah i know it was rough, it was rough. um the blink and you miss it yeah and, and like oh no i i disagree i think it lasted way no, too it, long. it lasted dramatic. Long. listen you want to blink and forget it it's just yeah oh. of course and ending ending with a culmination of a quarterback sneak on your own four yard line oh you want yeah you want to drink and forget it but like <laughs> the, the, the reason i bring it up is because when when he came in he was like new sheriff in town you know gonna going to clear house, start fresh. And so he did that, cleaned a lot of house, brought a lot of new guys in. And then within a year or two, he's cleaning out the guys he brought in, you know? And and that's a little bit like what it feels like. It's like, I think the frustration of the NYCFC fan right now is we had this team in 2021 that was so awesome, just like a really special collection of players. And if you lose one, like Castellanos, who we all knew was mm -hmm. one of the greater things. It's like, okay, you have this template. It's really strong and clear what everyone's role is. You lost your striker. Just go out and get a great striker and plug him in. You know, and now it, the, it, it got so cleaned out um, that you're sort of trying to, like, build the team from scratch again, and you have all these great players – I think great players, or at least with a lot of potential, but you don't know how they fit. And it just makes it really like muddy and hard to know um, what's on Cushing, like what he could have done to, or, or who knows, you know, um, it, it just feels like a mess with no clear um, direction. With any kind of losing team, I think that just some, some of this is bound to happen just in the course of, you know, it doesn't matter what the sport, what the team, who the coach is, whatever. I think uh, Charles Barkley said that winning is the deodorant of, that is, is the deodorant that covers up the stink uh, of issues in the, in the locker room or between players, chemistry, player versus coach, whatever. That's a 24 hour uh, activity. Yeah. Right. Exactly. These are, you know, like any job where you're around, you know, a certain group of people all the time, not everybody's going to like each other. Like that happens. And if, you know, work sucks, you know, in this case, your team is losing, you know, that that's just going to make it, make it e even worse. I mean, yes, it's easy for us to, uh, to say, you know, oh, they just didn't get it done last night or whatever, but these are still humans in the unique position where their job is, you know, on, is on public display for millions of people and their salaries are public and it's a much higher pressure environment. And they're half our age. Uh, <laughs> yes. And, and also for, it, but for NYCFC, um, part of the thing of, oh, what's next? What is their academy uh, system like? You know, for, I, I write for the, write on the Philadelphia Union. So they have a big academy system, but, uh, you know, with independent ownership versus this city football group hierarchy. Um, what is the NYCFC two and the academy programs like? You know, is there like somebody coming up through the pipeline? You know, they could maybe plug in, or are they not there yet? Right. You know, and, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say no. Yeah, I'm putting okay. down to you if you want to roll with that first. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think the big fear would be 
you know, you, you look at Philly versus New York and how different their mm-hmm. systems are set up. And right now, it's certainly easy to be envious of, of Phillies because not only are they having success um, in a sustained way, but also they hold on to the players that you care about, you know? Um, and I don't know. I, I think the, the fear for me is that in 2015, 2016, those years, uh, it was Manchester City and then New York City. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. it's clear that Corona and uh, maybe another team that they've bought, they've bought like, you know, seven teams since then. Um, and I think the general consensus is that New York is maybe fourth in that pecking order. Um, maybe that'll go higher with Messi in the league. Maybe. I was about to say that. Man. Yeah. Maybe it bumps up with the stadium as well. Um, but that's still years away. Uh, So the thing that would certainly suck is to just keep getting bumped down the ladder um, and get into a situation where, you know, you feel kind of like Red Bulls fans feel, you know, where they're like, we have essentially absentee ownership, Mm -hmm. um, which, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like they, they want to make money and they, they, they want to sell players and they care to that degree, but whether their main goal is winning cups is questionable. Um, and I, I was starting to get nervous until they brought in these new players, but I have to feel that if we were higher up on the ladder players, these players or players of that caliber would have come in at the first transfer window and we'd maybe be in fourth, you know, instead of 13th. I think also the fact that here in the New York City area, NYCFC is so low on the radar. Yankees, Mets, Giants, Jets, Rangers, you know, I'll throw my devils into it even in this case, too. Even the Red Bulls have their own stadium. Yeah. You know, that's that's the other side of it, too. You know, you're not. I think a lot will change at the stadium. With the new stadium, I think things will change a lot from an ownership standpoint. You know, but I I still think I still think Steve Cohen eventually buys the team, you know, especially when they move to when that stadium happens. (laughs) Wow. That'd be wild. You know, at this point, I think actually Uncle Stevie, like it or not, has really tried to put a good product on the field for the Mets. You know, it didn't work the season very, very clearly, but you know he just threw money at it. Right. Would, if he knew when to quit and just pulled the plug and, you know, said, all right, we're going to next year or two years from now. I respect way, that more than doubling down on stupid. By the way, Dan, I have a question for you, but first, I haven't done this proper. That's Ryan. He handles all of the uh, the cinema stuff that we do, uh, wrestling. He also worked with Keith Apicary, obviously one of Nathan's 82 different personas in this case. Uh, That's the best. To uh, which, basically, obviously, you. yeah, you're working with Nathan, too, on a lot of stuff. Yeah, we're going on tour uh, yeah. next week. Yeah. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least when you yeah. saw him with uh, his shirt off uh, with, you know, everything he's been doing with dad bod and boxing, he looks a lot better now than when I saw him. So. He's he's beastly that guy. Yeah, Dude. no. When I saw yeah. him, he was um, hair all over the place where there was still little. And uh, yeah, when he lovingly embraces another shirtless man, it um, it don't look right. But now he's probably good. Hey, he's he's two, he's two and zero. Oh. That yeah. dad is two and zero oh now. You know, he, he's a wonderful guy and a very very good boxer. Who knew? He really cares. It, it's uh, always the wiry ones. You never expect. Yeah, I mean, but look at Aaron. You know his dance, his dance system, his dance style that he's had for so long. I think helps him a lot when it comes to this. Uh, it's almost like Prince Nazim, if you want to go back to that boxing style years ago. But that first fight that he had last year, where it was about twenty two second KO, that was just brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he went off on that, and it, it was. Uh, <laughs> he, he's he's. Um, I, I think because of his dance style, like you were talking about, he's injured himself so much that, (laughs) you know, he's, he's just used to pain in a lot of ways. I I remember one time, I think he broke his foot or, or he had some issue with his foot and he was like, yeah, I tried to roll down a hill and like, and and it was, but just going on about his day, like, like when a dog breaks a leg or something Mm -hmm. that, you know, they're clearly in pain, but they're like, eh, what are you going to do? And then they're (laughs) fine. As long as I get to my kibble, it's good. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, what was your question, Scott? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> supposedly, correct me if I'm wrong, but were you at a Union game the other day? Uh, Philly. I was at a D.C. United game. D.C. United. Okay, yeah, because we weren't sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, where were you? Uh, D.C. versus who? Uh, it was D.C. versus Philly. It was D.C. versus Okay. 
Oh, it, that game. The, the Lays Cup game? Or the one in D.C.? It was the one in D.C. I, I try um, when I, oh. I was in town to see family or in Jersey to see family. And then my mm. buddy and I um, took a road trip down to D.C. I'm trying to see every MLS stadium. Um, I've yeah. gotten over half of them so far. Uh, but, I mean, Audi Field is nice. It's mm. it's a lot nicer than RFK was. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've heard good things about uh, about Audi Field. I haven't made it down to D.C. yet. The last two years, I've had it on the calendar, and then something happens where just trying to make the trip down just doesn't work out. Um, it's fun. I, I like I like the games, especially when the team I care about is not great. Uh, I like going to neutral yeah. games because it's just it's very relaxing, and you know all the Philly fans are chanting. Mm -hmm. annoying things to the dc fans and i'm like ah, yeah. it's funny when it's happening to someone else uh so <laughs> right like the um the red bull games are yeah. a different level of energy and that's something that you know nycfc union we can all agree on is uh screw the red bulls <laughs> you know or at least we're not really you know there is no love lost between the teams. Uh, I don't know if you saw Jim Curtin went on a long rant after the press conference at the press conference after the their Leagues Cup round of 16 game, just saying that he was just tired of their shenanigans for a team as bad as they are that we've beaten for five years in a row. <laughs> Jim Curtin, you know, I mean, obviously you 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 grow a, a healthy distaste for him because uh yeah, it's understandable. You know, when he's happy, you're sad. You know, that's just how sports are. But yeah. I, I do I do love his philliness. Uh, he just yes. he is not afraid to say uh, whatever, you know, thing comes into his mind. He's not politically correct about it. I just, I, I mm -hmm. like that quality for sure. Um, it, it's so fun covering him because if I really need a quote, like, there's always something there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. For sure. No, he's yeah. he's good for the league. And I I wish I, I, I wish he'd been hired as the national coach. Because mm -hmm. I think he's I think he's good. I think his players love him and mm -hmm. it would have been cool to get him out of Philly. <laughs> I just I admit I do not understand bringing Bearholter back. Like absent all of the other off the field garbage with him and the and the Raina family. Like just tactically on the field, I did not see reason to bring him back for another World Cup cycle. Even with you know, just on the field, just everything was blah. And they played better with the interim coach. Yeah, uh, in, in I mean that's that's what it is for me. Like it all, all the all the tabloid stuff. Like that doesn't really move the needle for me one way or the other as far as like being a coach. But you know, we saw what he can do. You know, like it. We've already seen it. I. I I, I believe in the one four-year cycle for each coach. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. Because I, I just don't – I don't know how he's I, – I don't may, – maybe because the games will be at home in the next World Cup, but uh, I, I don't see us getting past a team like the Dutch, you know, who mm -hmm. eliminated us last time. And you could – like in the game versus Iran, it was like, wow – we got him, you know, we, we, we won that game with a, a fairly evenly matched team, but then you, you get against the Netherlands and you're like, Oh my God, there's a long way to go. Um, so I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind having picked a coach with, uh, you know, some new ideas. Yeah. There, and and, you know, and even still never it's like even even union fans aren't happy with Jim like every you know sometimes it's like after the 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 game against Miami in the league's cup semis you know there was a lot you know every every fan base questions their coach especially when the team the team loses Stock so even less patience though than the rest of the other sports I think <laughs> uh yes I yeah. say remember that, Ryan, they, they a fire Ryan, scale. Ronnie Dilo when he won the cup <laughs> it's like get him out you know? Right, but Ro Ronnie also knew to uh, he had the, had the chance, and he bailed before things would turn uh, would turn. You yeah, know, for any to, for anybody that does that, you know, I I respect that, especially in a game like this, where look at um, I'm the the guy in Portland. I'm just his name escapes mm -hmm. me. Where Savarese? they went from Savarese, yeah, and, and he 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 just got he just got fired. 
They were in the the league. They were in the MLS Cup final against the NYCFC not even two years ago, and he's out, and they already tossed him. It's a very short. Uh, it's a very short memory. You know, so but also in in worldwide in soccer, it, it's common. Like in Europe, they sack coaches every every year, just about. Meanwhile, so you talk lot. about having Dave Gettleman for however many years that we had in football. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. We will yeah, get coaches it, it, constantly. But... <laughs> it, it's it's the way, and yeah, ugh, it, 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 it's it's all in the way you look at it. Um, I, I personally, soccer is 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 the more I watch it, the more mysterious it becomes in a lot of ways. Um, mm-hmm. Because that that last that last year, twenty twenty two, with NYCFC, they went through a, a terrible spell of losing tons of games. And still had, you know, Maxi Collins, uh, you know, the whole, the whole yeah, core yeah. outside of Tati. And um, then I can't even remember what it was, but like one thing, one good thing happened in one game and then they were off to the races. And I, I remember thinking, man, soccer is a lot more psychological than I thought it yeah. was. And I wonder how much of that is going on with this team uh currently and it's hard to know because there's so much turnover there's so much change of of coaching um and like you you just you just don't know where the blame lies for a season where you win five or six games um and and out of so many games there's so many there's like 30 games and we've won like six so uh that's not good no, I don't know what else to say, really. I had a really good conversation with Nick Cushing. I, I alluded to this, I think, in one of the emails. You know, it was supposed to be like 10 minutes. It ended up being about 35 minutes. Me and him, no cameras, just the two of us. Like him or hate him, there is no one in this organization feeling this pain more than that man is. You know, it was so heartfelt that when they lost to Minnesota, like right afterwards, I straight up cried for the man. Because it just it was one of those things where you feel his pain. You know, and the challenge that he's got. And obviously, weirdly enough, being about nine years younger than I was, I felt for him a little bit as a younger guy going through all of this and seeing, you know, the signs and the banners. Uh, ironically, when I was driving up to the stadium on Wednesday, the, the, the Cushing Lee out sign that you've seen, you know, occasionally, that was outside of the parking garage right there before I, I hadn't even driven into the parking garage to the stadium and I already saw it, you know, and it's like, from a human perspective, you kind of wonder a little bit how it's got to affect you. And I feel for the guy. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very reluctant to, I'm, I'm real careful with my words, you know, to always say like, Mm -hmm. to talk about people's performances rather than the people themselves, you know, Mm -hmm. because yeah, like it's very, um, it's not the easiest time in the world to be any kind of public figure. You know, like mm. is you in the eighties, you'd see people uh, who were quote unquote famous, and they, they looked like they were having a great time. You know, like <laughs> they, they just were always smiling, always waving. You know, and now it's like, you know, it, no one because we're sort of living in a surveillance state. You know, with with so many cameras and so many opinions coming at you from all sides, yeah. and when you crowdsource enough opinions you're going to see some really hurtful shit. And sorry for cursing on your podcast. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. Now, YouTube I, has a problem. We'll find, we'll let, you know, find out. But. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the thing The it's very easy, especially with sport, um, sporting figures. It's very easy to just think of them as like action figures mm. uh, and, and not as people, because you don't, you don't see the human side of them. Anytime you see them being interviewed, it's always about sports, you know, and generally you're catching them in a super emotional moment right after a loss where like they might say something that they wouldn't say if they were able to take a couple breaths, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and especially in a season like this where it's just basically a slog from day one (laughs) to day whatever it is, Um, just this nine month long excruciating thing and they have to get in front of people and answer the same questions about the same stuff when they and those questions have the same answers but they have to like 
put, try to put a slightly different spin every time or else be accused of being quote unquote out of ideas, you know, and it, it, it's, it's very rough. And so I do feel for him. Um, it's just the, the fan understands what the fan understands and the, the clear delineation is this team was one thing up to a certain point and then they became less than that. And that point happened to be right around the time Cushing got the head coaching job. Um, obviously there were a million other things that happened. Uh, and you could say they, they slowly, they gave him a championship team on day one and then slowly took everything away piece by piece that made it a championship team. <laughs> um, and we're, and the fans still expect, you know, the same level. So I just don't know. I just don't know what um, the move is. I don't know if uh, City Football Group thinks the same way the fans do or even cares uh, the same way. Uh, I, d I just don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, it's all a mystery. Well, you know, basically in this case, how do you feel about your Giants this season? Season starts next week. Yeah, you know, that's that's a different <laughs> that's a much different kind of team, you know, cuz that's a team whose glory days were uh at least a decade ago mm -hmm. and um the t the past 10 years it's funny, I can't remember if I told you this uh last time I was on the podcast and you asked me about the Giants. Um when during the 2011 Super Bowl, the second one against the Patriots, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh tom brady throws that hail mary on the last play yes and that ball hung up there for an eternity <laughs> and i just yeah. remember thinking like hey god you know like <laughs> <laughs> if you let this ball hit the ground i promise i won't be upset what happens with this team for the next five years and uh it happened and i stayed true to that and then their suckage lasted for 10 years. I was like, oh, man, shouldn't have made that deal. So God tacked on interest. Yeah, he yeah. sure did. That's <laughs> normally how that works. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this last year was really encouraging. Um, nice to see the fans excited again. Dable um, and Shane give me lots of hope. You know, um, I wish that the Giants sort of like coming back to life hadn't coincided with this even bigger Eagles renaissance, you know, mm -hmm. that's always gross. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that they matter again. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they took a little bit of a step back this year because they won so many close games last year. And I, mm -hmm. I get it. Like they have to, uh, build the team slowly because the um i'm just trying to think of the right way to say this like they, it's almost they, like they were a year ahead of schedule last year th that's, so that's now they're like, oh, oh, what now? <laughs> that's totally it that's totally it like they um they they won more games than they quote unquote should have uh and when shane came in um i believe there's an interview on record where either it was him saying it or someone like a personal confidant that uh, relayed the conversation. And he said, you know, um, 2024, that's the year. Mm. Like, we are in cap hell right now. And it's going to take us two years to dig our way out of it. And um, in the meantime, let's try to see if we can win a couple games. And I think he's just been doing a phenomenal job. And I mean, even the, the Daniel Jones contract, who regardless of, um, how you feel about Jones as his, as far as his ability is to win a Super Bowl, which is what really matters um, to this fan base anyway. Uh, it's $140 million or, or whatever it is. It's a lot of money. Um, but it's structured in such a way that they're out scot-free in two years if um, things go sour, you know? And if they go great, then they've sort of locked him in to a quote unquote pretty cheap rate as far as, you know, uh, the top quarterbacks go. And if he stays the same, then it's probably just a fair contract. Uh, so 
I just like the way he's doing things. Basically what I know as a fan, and this applies to NYCFC too, um, I know that I'm not that knowledgeable about how these things work. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I would be a terrible soccer manager. I would be a garbage football coach. You know, I, I don't like, I have that self-awareness. So I just don't want to feel like I know more than the people in charge, you know, when, um, and when Gettleman was doing things, I was like, that's not going to work. And then two years later, when it didn't work, I was like, this is freaking me out, man. I shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't be able to know this, you know? Um, and I guess Bakrar had, uh, an injury, um, mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, nothing serious though. Per oh, good. Yeah. Oh, how's Maxi? Do you know? He's doing okay. Uh, initial thoughts last I knew from the press conference last night is he said, initial thoughts is it doesn't look serious. It probably looks serious when he's put on the cart, but his words, not mine. It do, initial thoughts is it does not look serious. Oh man. It looked yeah. bad. Yeah. It looked bad. like the angle he got hit from and, and uh, like Tiago Martins was on a cart, what, like two, three months ago. And like a couple of weeks later, he was back out again. That's true. That's so, true. You know, car, the cart, I think the cart, I think is a little different in soccer than it is in football. You know, you bring yeah. that cart out, you're done for the season in football. Of course. I mean, <laughs> in soccer, soccer in general, like, you know, you see a guy writhing in pain and you're like, is he out for three months or will he be sprinting five seconds from now? Yeah. You know? there, there's so many ones I've seen where like, <laughs> yes, there's straight up flopping and embellishment, but there's also somewhere like, oh, that actually looked serious and like he'll be out for a while. And then he jogs it out on the sidelines and is back five minutes later. Just walk it off. What? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it, it's all over the place. Yet there, yet there's also players where, somebody just brushes by them and they go down like they've just been shot. <laughs> um, I'm happy to hear that because Maxie's the one guy who I really don't want to lose. Like, when he's on the field, you can just see the movement of mm -hmm. everything is so much nicer. And it, it 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 doesn't always go back to our own goalie to like, okay, let's start over. You know, it's 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 so much less ponderous when he's out there. Um him, Bakrar, and and Risa too. Like mm -hmm. I really like Risa. Um, yeah, he took the hit yesterday in the ankle, but he's he seems to be fine too. Yeah, yeah. That that pass um, <laughs> that Bakrar scored the goal on against. Um, oh my God, I'm blanking. Who they just play? Yeah, uh, Yohei was his first name, I think. No, uh, no, no, no. Oh, who? Who? What team did they play before? Um, yesterday, Montreal. Montreal. Thank yeah, you. Montreal game. Yeah. Because when Bakrar scored that goal. Uh, I was like, wow, what kind of double move did he put mm -hmm. to get the ball in front of the defender? And then I saw the top down. And it was Reese's pass that, like, curled in, like, perfectly around him. So he he's – I can't remember a, uh, a guy who could pass like that out of the defense ever for NYCFC. It gives you some hope for the future, especially after the season we've had. But this is also the second youngest team in the league, barely even. Mm. You know, I mean, they, yeah. which is which is cool if they're going to grow together. Mm -hmm. But if they're going to turn twenty-one like Pereira and then bounce, then you know, it, hearing that they're young doesn't actually make me feel any better. You know, true. And you mentioned something before about the fact that this team is well. You 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 equated it to fourth in CFG's hierarchy because I mean you got Yokohama. I think that, you know the the team over in uh, I think Auckland. So there's a lot of different teams under the CFG umbrella now. And as a result, it in some ways, you know, Girona, you know, Tati went over there. Uh, Alex Kayans went over there. So it's almost like this team is a breeding, you know, it was basically a training ground for the bigger leagues, if you will. And it's disheartening. Look, MLS has always kind of been like AAA soccer to the worldwide stage anyway. But this is, takes it to like an even bigger, level, like double A level. And yeah. it's it sucks. <laughs> I yeah. think it depends on the team or the season, you know, but also I'm – a college basketball fan so like it's easy mm. for me to 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 translate like oh like the, there's players here for a time and now it's sometimes even in just a year or two and then gone on to granite pastures it's a revolving door of, of players so that that translates to soccer a lot to think it, of it like that yeah and i'm also i i think i i think maybe the most disappointing thing about this season uh is is magno um mm -hmm. not 
I don't want to say like he's disappointed me. It's just that the fact that with a someone with that amount of talent, like somehow the team can't make it work, uh, and he's not even getting subbed in anymore. Like that that's that's rough because I do remember. I, and I mean, I guess it's just like that hyper memory from like these moments that you really care about uh, in the MLS cup game against Portland. Uh, you know, the announcer Talis is about to kick his uh, penalty kick and the announcer say Talis Magno one for the future, but this is about the here and now, you know? And I remember thinking like, Oh man, if we win this, how cool that we have like the next generation just lined up and uh, just with the way the season's gone, it's um, you just hope there aren't going to be too many more years like this. You know, he hasn't been the same since Tati left because when Tati, when, when him and Tati, he was I think second overall in assists when Tati left because it was just this great tandem where you just feed one to the other. You know, it's and yeah, like I said, in this case here, it's it's kind of sad to see because he's not even getting playing time, and I think he's the fifth highest play uh, five, uh fifth highest salary on the team right now too. So there's a lot yeah. of money spent. He might be gone in the offseason. Yeah, and and you wonder if that's a Cushing thing too. And um the the thing where he's flipping off Chano. Oh and yeah. Now, yeah, and now neither one's on the field. Like it's there's a little bit of like, man, like who's who's running this mm-hmm. chicken shack? <laughs> like it, it's it's just it's bizarre. It's 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 bizarre that so many good players um just either aren't on the team anymore or aren't playing for the team. Uh, it, it, I don't know. It's a weird – it's been a weird year. Yeah. Uh, I want to respect your time a little bit. I just want to yeah, – I don't know how much more time you've got, but I did want to talk a little SOU and music if you got a couple of minutes. Sure. Yeah, I've got yeah. like five minutes. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, last time we talked about uh, SOU, I know you got into Gilgamesh recently too. Gilgamesh, yeah. You know <laughs> yeah, because it came up in your Zelda video just recently. <laughs> wow. Didn't we listen to it. with a lot of people. <laughs> we we listened to that this morning and it's actually uh it was actually really good and, and awesome. I, I yeah yeah and i definitely related to what you what you said about that with the um you know about how you're know, like oh this one has billions of views this one has ten thousand. there was an album i listened to recently of like a, a new you know new wavy type sound and the album that some person had uploaded to YouTube had less than a hundred views when I when I found stumbled on it. Yeah. So I, I, I so I definitely relate to not having the normal mu- music, normal quote unquote music tastes and the variety for playlist in our house for sure. Sure, outside of the mainstream, and I, I think I think in a way that's been a big disservice that um, YouTube, Spotify, all these digital platforms have done for music because even though they help the music get out there, um, I think just having a visual of how many people are listening to it gives um, popular music uh, like a validity to it Mm -hmm. that seems, Mm -hmm. uh, I, I shouldn't say it like that. It makes really good shit that doesn't get a lot of plays seem less than you know um when in fact what i mean when we were kids and you just put on an album you just relate to it as music you know and so i i think um it can make great pieces of art seem small yeah. that's and, and also especially when there's so much more out there now and so much more to find people find uh music but you know for College radio, especially a place you know, we were spoiled. I was, I was honored to be a part of it with WSU. That brought, um, that brought more obscure, newer, newer things to, um, you know, to the into the area. And now it's and now with technology, iHeartRadio, and all, you can listen to any station from anywhere. Just mm-hmm. about it isn't related to what can I get, what can I pick up. Um, with an antenna and a coat hanger from a radio in my bedroom, you know, it's mm-hmm. th- there's so much more out there. Yet it still seem it, it still seems harder than ever to break through. But it's uh, but it's been it, it's both good and it, I mean I'm not in this in, in the industry per se, but it's both good and bad. I think. Yeah, no, it's a wash. I, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. 
much easier to get your stuff heard, much more difficult to get compensated for it. <laughs> um, actually, just TikTok after. artists now doing that sort of stuff now because that's how you get it out there. There's such a way that. Um, uh, sorry, I don't mean to interject. I know I've been quiet this whole no, time. No, no, no. I actually Go felt ahead. bad because I've been like yammering away. Please. No, no, <laughs> no, no you're, you're talking about your expertise. Unfortunately, I mean, I don't even know why you all were so angry about the Red Bulls, but uh, that's just me being a Jersey guy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as far as like music industry is concerned, and uh, you have such an influx of uh, material now because of like overseas stuff being able to cross over to the U.S., whereas back in the day mm-hmm. it was whatever you could get on a cassette or a CD, and now because of streaming. It gives the opportunity to have a lot of people go ahead and put their stuff out there, but it also gives people the opportunity to get overshadowed because either Mm -hmm. something hits the algorithm right or because someone has a more of a Mm -hmm. homegrown fan base as opposed to somebody who's just doing stuff in their in their closet or their attic where they have the soundproofing where it probably sounds great and it's you know it's almost probably artistic in comparison to some of the more homogenized stuff that is out there. But all that matters is if you get that hook and people use it that's what really matters nowadays and you know it's it's it is more about like you know a popularity contest rather than what was art and what was simply just marketable on the billboard hot 100 for sure for sure it's just its own set of struggles you know it's it's never going to be easy making a living as an artist you know um yeah and uh although for your defense i will say i did get somebody hooked on uh, nsp yesterday (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate um, it. Uh, we were actually hanging out with uh, our mutual friend, uh, JT, down um, mm-hmm. at the shore and everything. And on the way back, uh, I was telling him about, you know, uh, possibly going to be able to talk to you. He's like, yeah, I know that one song um, the, that they did with, um, what was it, uh, Sex Bomb? It's like, no, 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 you're, you're mixing up Sex Bomb from Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> Sex Bomb is Tom oh, Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Star Bomb, but yeah. you don't know anything. Luigi's Ballad. He knew, he knew Luigi Ballad, right? Oh, that's cool. And G- some of it all kind of blends guy. together. I like, yeah. And some of it all kind of blends together. It's bedtime from Prophecy. And yeah. after that, we just we go through the whole bedtime. album. He goes to Cool <laughs> Patrol after that. And it's like, that's just the whole drive back up uh, to the Edison area. So it's yeah. like, he's that's hooked cool. now. Thanks, man. That that means a yeah. lot. And, and like, we, we are an example of a band that could have never succeeded um in the 80s or 90s because mm-hmm. no label would have signed us we <laughs> the, the yeah. internet allowed us to find our audience who has the same weird sense of humor that we do you know um but i think that i think we would have been just way too left of center um for any label to take a chance on um especially in the 90s where you would see so many bands release one album and then if it wasn't an immediate hit, the label would just shelve them mm-hmm. and the band has to, mm-hmm. break, you know, so I, it's, it's not like in the seventies where you'd sign like a five album development deal. And then for Pink Floyd, like your fifth album is dark side of the moon, mm-hmm. but like those first four are really weird and you would have gotten dropped by your label way, way earlier than <laughs> that. You know? Yeah. So well, funny, and a lot of them have. And a lot of them have clauses like if you sell less than X records, mm-hmm. like we're not even bothering with your with uh, the rest of your of the albums on your contract. Like you're done. <laughs> you know, like we, that's we, all sta- that's standard practice in, in, in industry still. But now with more avenues out there where you do, where you can work outside the system. I mean, just you know whether it's music, t- music, TV, sports stuff. I mean, look at us. We're we we're talking on a primarily YouTube platform. The stuff that to the extent and the product and also the production value. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you don't need to have as much of like crazy expensive recording equipment, a big setup and also the barriers to entry of, Oh, you can just make something cool. Like, yes, it makes a difference. Don't use the cheapest stuff you can find, but you can make something sound like you put a lot of money and effort into making it if you didn't as much if you know this how is, to do it. You know what that. it is though? There's right. a certain charm to like the early stuff like that dinosaur laser fight. Oh, there absolutely you is. Know, and all the earlier <laughs> stuff like that, you know, there mm-hmm. was, there was, you know, it was I liked it from that perspective. Or like Dra- Dragon Slayer, which I know you redid as an animation. Um, there was like I said, this just chill charm of a bunch of people for, you know, you know, uh, that just got together and just did a thing. And then obviously you you 
you, I know, understand the challenge that you had, especially when you were in New York trying to get this going, you know, and your family was kind of like, there's a job at the post office. Maybe it's better suited for you, that kind of thing, you know. Um, but no, it's it's hugely awesome to see what it's become over the last few years for you, especially now. I mean, obviously, you're God. I, I, I'm I afraid to ask how many miles a year you travel at this point. You know, it's crazy. It's 150,000 easy. Yeah. yeah, well, because uh, well, it's the two projects, right? It's it's NSP and Game Grumps, mm -hmm. and then like I have a couple of other bands. Um, Shadow Academy. Yeah, thanks, man. That that was like a big, um, uh, itch to scratch for me, you know. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely like the darker side of Dan Avedan almost because it's just compared to everything else, it's got such a an adult tone. It's got a very uh, morose tone in some cases, like White Whale, but then you also have like once and never more which kind of just like oh like i could get high to once and never more and i could just drift off man you That's have awesome. no idea how much that hits no that means a lot it, it, it meant a lot to write it you know i i think it's just um you know we all have we every human being feels the entire spectrum of human being moods mm -hmm. and experiences and um different types of I, I hate referring to NSP as art because it's so dumb, but like d different... Dumb stuff can be art. Dumb yeah, stuff can be exactly. fantastic. The, the different <laughs> it's about interpretation. Yeah, yes. exactly. They, they bring out different parts of you and it's different expressions of um, different emotions. So it, it's as, as long as it's honest that I think people will connect with it um, because the fake stuff, the fake stuff can definitely sell, but like I don't know. I I feel like you can feel it, it at at a certain point. Like they they did this for the money, you know. Like mm -hmm. this is right. these drums are quantized. This, these vocals are auto tuned. This is just like created in a lab to to sell units, um, which is fine. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. pop like music certain Britney like. Spears or Black Eyed Peas songs, which have repeating lyrics. Yeah, and I I don't want to like put any of them down because I couldn't do what they do like that that that's a whole that's a whole nother level of of stuff you have to deal with um yeah. to, to be that famous and uh all, all that nonsense but um yeah i'm 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 glad like i'm glad i get to do um what i want to do and just be able to keep the lights on at my house <laughs> to do it yeah that's <laughs> where we have a we have a same goal and it's yeah. very relatable and, and also like for the startup stuff, it's more relatable. Or like I list, you know, like we all, we're all from New Jersey, and if you, even if you've moved away from there, like it's still relatable. Like you're like there's a like there was a Game Grumps video you did years ago where you talked about the about uh, the moving truck uh, story. Like I was driving by Menlo Park with a, a mall with a U-Haul truck. I'm like the first time I heard, I'm like I know that spot. I know exactly where. The yep, story is going. Yep. <laughs> it's going to end with a truck lodged under an overpass. Yep. <laughs> that, no question. And I mean, I was just, I'm just being in Jersey. I was at the Union Plaza Diner um, on Route 22, and I was. Like, oh, now the Union Diner can call. Oh Plaza. yeah, that's right. They did rebrand. They did, but it, it's it's the same on the inside, which is what matters. Um, yeah. And yeah. It. it, uh, it I was just like, man, this is this is home. No matter what, this is always home. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thanks. Thanks for helping me uh, connect the roots a little bit. Always, man. Yeah. Now, I did want to have one music question for Dan. Um, this is simply because uh, this is maybe a trend I've been seeing lately. Um, now, after all the music groups that you've been connected to, whether it be Shadow Academy, NSP, Star Bomb, uh, Night Ranger, all of that, hmm. um, I've also seen a lot of YouTubers going into the Broadway spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Brentel Floss with his uh, mm -hmm. off-Broadway uh, Trek musical. You've had uh, Matt Pat uh, uh, co-producing uh, Grey House, uh, which is he from Try Guys. a very big hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the chances, um, say maybe in you know the long run, that we might get a Dan Avedan or a Ninja Sex Party Broadway musical. Oh, quite slim, I think. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. If, if Book of Mormon was already too rough for some people. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be very off-off I, Broadway. I yeah, feel like that would be like the final plateau, really. Yeah, you know, I mean, that, 
I've never thought about it. Uh, it's a very cool idea. I don't know who would play uh, me or our characters because Finn, I, Finn Wolfhard. Oh, uh, yeah. Just go right to Finn on that one. He's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. He, um, I've, I never gave it much thought just because uh, that's a type of singing that I just mm. I don't have the training or understanding of. Like, I go to see Broadway shows. My wife loves Broadway. And um, I go to see Broadway shows and I'm like, I, I'm 10 feet away from them and I do not know what they're doing. Like, I do not <laughs> know they're pr producing the sounds that uh, they produce. They're, they're just amazing and amazing athletes too, to be yeah. running around yeah. and singing like that. Um, yeah. so I never thought about it, but perhaps, perhaps you've just planted a seed, which will someday be a forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, if, I, if I planted the seed and something grows perfectly fine, just we'll let me get a couple of acorns off that tree. That's all I meant. Yeah. Just 45% <laughs> yeah. off the top. That's, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yes. I'm not, I'm also, not a greedy man by it's far. By stream punk entertainment. Yeah. Or... No. <laughs> also, it's a few shekels. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or not. I, if, whatever falls off the tree but i can understand how you would say that it's like not necessarily like your forte but then again i also think about you know the collaborative efforts uh, of people that have gone ahead and made music like that like i think back to like elton john uh when he started collaborating with people and it's like mm -hmm. you know if you can find like the right person with the expertise i feel like it would be epic because again you've just had such a range of sounds over the years that you could incorporate a little bit of everything, and I think it would great tell a great narrative. That, that's just that, my opinion. That's really cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll um, I will uh, you know, and this coming year is going to be our fifteenth anniversary, believe it or not, of NSP. Yeah, yeah, because wow. we started in two thousand nine. Um, the pandemic really like hastened things. You know? wow. Yeah, yeah, it flies by. Um, but yeah. yeah, so I guess after fifteen years, you do need to start branching out and looking at new things or new angles. So. The guys uh, from South Park did uh, Book of Mormon. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're amazing. They, they were always a musical. Yeah, they were always a Orgasmo or all the you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of who who would have looked at Orgasmo and thought, these guys are going to be like the premier satirists of our time? Dude, I watched, I, I remember their episode of Time Warped when it came out, like in 1995. And I remember looking at it thinking, these guys are going to go nowhere. These things suck. And that was my <laughs> yeah. comment when I watched it. <laughs> it's like, freaking call that one. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. It's, it's really funny. They're great. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, but when you, you look at something like Cannibal the Musical when it was first started, and it was like, that's right, yeah, that's no, and yeah, now it's like, yeah, yeah. now I it's mean, like cult okay. classic right up there with like Repo the Genetic Opera and stuff. It's just like one of those things where, you know, if you hear the melody, you're like, oh my god, you know what that is? Yeah. Well, we'll probably wrap it up on this, but uh, I don't know if you saw the video, but Matt Stone uh, played uh, with Rush. On the 25th yeah. anniversary, that was, dude. I love that. I love that video for that part. Huge of that. Rush fan. Yeah, I mean, I'm thrilled for them. They, those two guys, um, deserve the best. I'm still the, the Neil Peart dying was the mm. the most I've ever felt for the the death of someone I've never met personally. You know, um, so you just you just want the people who create the stuff that makes you happy to have long happy lives. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, that that really hurt, and um, I just hope Getty and Alex ha are just out there having a great, great time. They probably are. Dan, I want to let you go, but yeah. thank you, man. You're awesome yeah. as always. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Love to do this again we'll once you get through maybe like Games Grump Live and everything like that, because you're going into Canada, out of Canada, back into Canada. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in yeah. Jersey, October 4th. Yeah, yeah we, by right. the way, yeah, he and I will be there for that, too, just to let you know. Yeah. Oh, killer. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah in Red Bank. So let, let, let's meet up. Yeah, I definitely. Will myself over. Absolutely. Oh, so yeah. very but, cool. Uh, yeah. Dude, uh, thank you as always. Steph, man, is, awesome. Steph is coming along. She's the one that introduced me to you. And as I said, no. <laughs> oh, that's rad. <laughs> yeah, just be excited. Been helping us out so much. Uh, my my pleasure. And um it, it's uh it's cool. And yeah, maybe maybe we'll talk uh during the playoffs and uh discuss uh where the team's at. Yeah, well, no more by that point, I'm sure. <laughs> Someone can explain to me why there was so much Jersey hate. You know, I'll appreciate that. Uh, oh, listen, among anybody who lives in not Jersey pretty much hates Jersey. It, it kind of sucks that way. So, <laughs> we yeah. like it that way. Yeah, you yeah, know what? Well, yeah, us <laughs> against the world kind of thing. Yeah, you know? at least we have that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, all right, you guys even, take even care. Even the, thank you, man. Be good. Yeah. Cheers. Great talking to you. Take care. You're Bye -bye. awesome.